So we'll, I'll call you when oh, okay. you're already here. So are we ready? So if I could just uh, have your attention for a short while. So it is my very great pleasure to uh, be in the position of welcoming you to this wonderful event. I'm the Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Research at the University of Sydney, and I'm here representing our Vice-Chancellor, who unfortunately could not join us. Uh, before we begin our proceedings, I would like to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners on, of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. It is upon their ancestral lands that the University of Sydney is built. And as we share our knowledge, teaching, learning, and research practices within this university, May we also pay respect to the knowledge embedded forever with the Aboriginal custodianship of the country. So I would like to uh, very much welcome, um, with great pleasure, Her Excellency, the Honourable Marie Bashir, uh, Governor of New South Wales and State Patron of the Global Foundation. It's lovely to have you here, Governor. Uh, Madam Christine Lagarde, Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, it, it is personally a great thrill to have you here and we really warmly welcome you. I also welcome His Excellency Mr. Stéphane Romate, Ambassador of the Republic of France to the Commonwealth of Australia, the Honourable Tanya Plibersek, Member of Parliament, Deputy Opposition Leader and Shadow Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, the Honourable Tim Fisher, former Deputy Prime Minister, Ms. Aidy Dawes-Birch, CEO, and Mr. Steve Howard, Secretary General of the Global Foundation, members of the Board of the Advisory Council of the Global Foundation, Senate Fellows to the University, and Mr. Peter McAvoy, Executive Producer of Q&A from the ABC. So the, the University of Sydney is truly delighted to have co-hosted the filming of Q&A with the ABC today. It's a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the many ways in which we as a university community actively support uh, public debate on serious issues uh, and really provide an opportunity for our communities to influence policy and, and their future. I want to thank the Global Foundation for bringing us this wonderful opportunity and to, ho to host such a, a respected global leader as Madame Lagarde here at the university. Uh, that foundation has many eminent trusted friends around the world and its, its capacity as a global governing body led by citizenry affords it great respect. And we feel very privileged um, to have had the address today from Madame Lagarde and are honoured to host this reception uh, for the presentation of the Global Foundation's Global Achievement Award. Um, it's very fitting that the Governor who has been a state patron of the foundation for many years now and is also a former chancellor of our wonderful university, uh, is able to be with us this afternoon. Thank you. Um, it was quite inspiring today to sit there uh, and just listen to the conversation um, about equity, the importance of the role of women in our economies. Um, and it was particularly uh, inspiring to hear Madame Lagarde talk um, with great respect for the idea that confrontation is perhaps not the best way to resolve differences um, and the importance of cooperation and consensus building. That was really wonderful to hear, so thank you for that. So I have the very great pleasure now to invite the CEO of the Global Foundation, Aidy Dawes-Birch, to give us a sense of why we're here today. Thank you. And thank you, Jill, very much. And thanks to you all for joining us here for a very special moment today. Um, just a quick reference to the camera. Uh, we are not being broadcast. <laughs> this is a private event, but the camera has been supplied just purely for our own purposes. So, um, The Global Foundation, in its simplest form, might be best described as an influential network of citizens who are committed to a sustainable future. One of the characteristics that defines us is that we harness the talents of the very best people from around the globe as global citizens to help us build a better world. 
The belief of this great network that surrounds us is exactly in line with the belief that many aspirational people throughout the ages have held close, including Martin Luther King, whom I referred to earlier and whom you've recently quoted, in espousing the mantra that we're all in this together. And therefore, we all have a responsibility to make it work together as best we can. From time to time in our 16-year history, we've had the privilege of recruiting some exceptional people from all corners of the globe in support of this vision, convening programs of true dialogue and relationship building between nations, organisations, cultures, peoples, companies, thought leaders on all the continents across the planet. The Foundation was quick to seize the opportunity to host Madame Lagarde in Melbourne in 2007 when she first visited Australia as Minister for Trade in the Government of France. And she joined us and spoke so eloquently at our Australia Summit. And at the summit dinner that evening, in front of 500 guests, she then moved our Prime Minister John Howard through her words and moved him to tears as she thanked him on behalf of the people of France for the efforts of both his father and his grandfather in fighting on the Western Front to liberate France in the First World War. The next morning at our summit breakfast, she then won the admiration of the then opposition leader, Kevin Rudd. <laughs> and within the space of 12 hours, she had secured bipartisan support <laughs> from the highest levels of the Australian political system. And in so doing, had positively transformed political relations between Australia and France. <laughs> Thus, an enduring friendship between Christine Lagarde and the Global Foundation was born and has continued throughout her stellar rise initially during her more senior appointments with the Government of France. And then in July 2011, she was appointed to become the Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, the first female chief of that august institution. The Global Foundation was happy to be an active global campaigner in her appointment. And as you have just witnessed in the last hour, she has thrown open the windows and the doors of the IMF and insists on advocating for issues of international development, of gender equality, of sustainable global growth, and bravely of new ways of doing important things, including a challenge for a new world order in relation to multilateralism. Many of you will recall her video message sent from Washington with great affection to our most recent Australia summit at the dinner that we held with Prime Minister Julie Gillard, where Christine warmly welcomed the global citizens' mandate of the Global Foundation and exhorted to us continue to stir the debate, propose ideas, catalyse proposals to help the constant dialogue in the discussions we are having at the G20, at the IMF and in the official conversations taking place around the world. How her words have inspired us. The Q&A session we've enjoyed today is but one beautiful expression of empowering citizens to engage directly with global leaders, <coughs> such as Christine Lagarde. Thank you to our ABC for making this extraordinary outside broadcast possible and to the University of Sydney for providing the platform in the community to make this event possible today. I'm pleased to say that we are working with Christine's colleagues at the IMF and with our own networks to see if we can replicate this direct engagement and broadcast model in other centres around the world. Christine Lagarde is, for many in this room and for millions around the world, the global icon epitomising what it means to be a leader with a clear voice in a fuzzy world. It is indeed our honour to honour Christine today, a global champion. So to Madame Christine Lagarde, today we honour you with the inaugural Global Foundation Global Achievement Award, which says, in acknowledgement of inspirational global leadership in the promotion of long-term sustainable development. And so it is my great pleasure to invite Her Excellency, the Governor of New South Wales and a beloved patron of the Global Foundation, Her Excellency, Mrs Murray Bashir, to come forward and present Christine with the award. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Aidy. Professor Kiwela. So many distinguished guests in this room and friends. Indeed, Madame Christiane Lagarde. It's a great, great privilege and certainly to be able to say thank you on behalf of the Global Foundation for your humanity and your integrity as well as your great skills and what you have already given to the world in leadership. So it's with a great sense of pleasure 
and certainly we all feel humble in your presence to be able to say thank you and present to you the Global Foundation's inaugural award and may the years ahead be ever so fulfilling. You'll have our good wishes forever. <laughs> Well, Excellency, uh, Madame Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, uh, Excellencies, Honourable Guests, Friends, Ladies and Gentlemen, and I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. <laughs> While you all are enjoying a drink and chatting in the back, uh, what I would like to do is say thank you, uh, tell all the, uh, uh, the speakers who have preceded me at this podium how embarrassed I am and uh, Madam Chancellor, you say that you are humbled. Boy, you don't know how humbled I feel <laughs> and how um, you know, um, little I recognize myself in the praise that you have, you have sung uh, for me. I'm, I'm not sure that I deserve all that, but uh, I'm very pleased to uh, accept it and I will regard it as a, as a duty of continuation of the task that I've embarked uh, upon. And I will certainly uh, not keep it just to myself, but I will also, I hope, uh, be able to share it with the IMF at large because they are um, my, my team, my friends, my, my, my people, uh, very much uh, my family as well in, uh, in a very strange way. So I will, I will share that with them. The two things that I wanted to say. First of all, I'm very proud that um, those very talented women have said a few words uh, for me. You, Madam, Excel Madam uh, Governor, Excellency, if I may say, I'm so um, impressed but by everything you've done uh, as Chancellor, as Governor, as a uh, psychiatrist, as a doctor, as a researcher, uh, and to have uh, embarked on all the, these initiatives that range from uh, caring, looking after people, being attentive to people, to doing scientific research in a field that is imminently complicated, and that has to do with the depth of our mind and our mental stability or lack of it. And uh, uh, I speak for myself indeed. <laughs> so I'm, I'm truly honored that uh, you've accepted to, uh, to give me this award, and I, I have huge admiration uh, for you, not only because you look like Coco Chanel and dress as, <laughs> as beautifully as she does. And, and boy, she was a woman of many talent, great independence as well, just like you. You, Madam Deputy Vice-Chancellor, uh, I would like to also thank you because you embody for me uh, the excellence in research, the focus on innovation, uh, the uh, uh, full access to knowledge that this university has been giving ever since its foundation to both men and women based on merits. And I think that is an extraordinary achievement that you carry through and that I know you uh, make sure is embodied in the various initiatives that you take for women around you. So thank you very much for what you do yourself personally, but also for what you do for others around you. And vous, madame, CEO uh, of uh, the Global Foundation, uh, you have uh, you've reminded me of the uh, of very, very, uh, very sweet memories of time spent with the Global Foundation, with the uh, Australian authorities back in 2007 and more recently. And those were indeed moments of, of great uh, pride and, and shared endeavor, if I may say, because on the year when we actually celebrate the 100th anniversary of the First World War, the 70th anniversary of the end of the second, and the 70th anniversary of the IMF, uh, we, we had a collective uh, goal at the time, which was about freedom, which was about um, uh, making sure that people could um, 
take charge of their own destiny and not be the victim of, uh, of powers and, and tyranny in many ways. So for that and for all the great work that you do at the Global Foundation and, uh, and the focus that you have on women in particular, I would like to thank you as well. So thank you again to all of you. Well, that concludes our formal proceedings, and please enjoy the reception, enjoy the companionship this afternoon, and thank you, everybody. <laughs>